branch off into other NFL stuff as well, because that's something that, you know, we do, you know, you look at the Browns right now, you know, everybody was hyped on Baker Mayfield. I never was. Um, I had a little more respect for him this year because it seemed like he humbled himself down. He was playing a little bit better. He looked really good against us um, in week one. But then you hear, you know, I have a cousin that is an ESPN affiliate in Cleveland. I have heard stories upon story upon story about him um, that I've not revealed. But, and there's some I have, but there's other players out there that want to leave. You know, Jarvis Landry wants to go. Now I'm hearing Kareem Hunt wants to be out. Um, There's a plethora of players that don't want to be there, and it's all because of Baker Mayfield. He's also That's kind of hurting them too. Like he wants yeah. to play through this shoulder injury, but it's not what's best for the team. Yeah. Yeah, he looks rough out there. Just it's his sure area. You go and sit on sit on the bench and get healthy. He screwed himself out of a lot of money because he could have made a bag after how he had been performing, getting into the playoffs and stuff. And now he's played through the injury. He's not yeah. worth it. He screwed himself out of money, and they're losing a lot of games. They barely beat the Lions because yeah, he can. He's overthrowing guys, which if you're not healthy, don't, don't you're hurting your team more than you're helping them. And yeah. see, I think his fear hurt. level is, is, and it's a fear level, Brandon. I mean, see, and see, that's where I think part of my problem with Baker Mayfield is, is that I think in his own mind, he believes, he knows that he's not as good as he thinks he may be, or that he portrays himself to be. So if someone steps in and just outperforms him, over it's over he can be and, traded i could sorry sorry jp go ahead no, I, and I think you. he knows that i think he knows that because everybody knows in this league there's always someone out there that can take your place in a second there's the next best thing mm-hmm. next best thing now of course we're not going to see that with mahomes but he's not mahomes okay so i do believe that that's his fear that there's somebody, there's somebody sitting in the wings right back behind him that he's probably watched play in practice and go, oh, shit, this guy's really good. And if I screw up and don't play and he steps in and just starts ripping the field apart and everybody loves him because they don't love me, where am I going next? I'm out of a job. Yeah. What are your guys' opinion? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes anywhere else. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up on another team in the next two, three years. Just yeah. kind of way. Can't give him an extension. That's how I see it. No, he's not worth whatever. <clears throat> he's going to command a lot. Maybe a hundred million, something mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, he's just not worth it. No, yeah. and the Browns can't justify giving him that much. When, I mean, he's dealing with some serious injuries right now, but you're always going to be dealing with something. Exactly. Yeah, Mahomes dealt with the ankle, the knee, the toe. If you can't, this is how you're going to perform when you are dealing with something. Go find somebody else. Exactly. Especially with how their quarterback history, you've seen the jersey with the 400 names down it. Yep. Yeah. We'll just add another name. Their team mm-hmm. that's not afraid to do that. He let, may have led him to a playoff win and stuff, but if he can't get you over the hump, they're not. It's like Kirk Cousins. He's oh, not going to get you over the hump. You've got to find somebody who can get you there. If you can't get him there, what's the point of playing? Exactly. You have to exactly. find your guy. Yeah. As tough as yeah. that is, there's only so many guys. Mm-hmm. But don't get content with just – I feel like as Chiefs fans, we kind of got this from – it was like with Alex Smith. He could – I don't think he could really win us a championship, but he got us to the playoffs every year. It wasn't yep. until we switched quarterbacks. That's how Baker over is. The hump. But a, mm-hmm. a way worse version. I don't want to compare Smith and Baker. But I think a lot of similarities there as far as he can't get you there. They might as well start looking for something else. And I think he showed this year that he definitely can't get him there, especially dealing with injuries. Yeah, and Alex knew it too. And that was the greatest thing about – and that's what I love so much about Alex Smith is that he knew what his limitations were. He knew how great he was from – every standpoint other than the fact that he just couldn't get over that certain level. And he was a great mentor to Mahomes because of that. Do Baker would never do that. Never. I, yeah. I mean, he, he's not the guy. Like, I'm here, I'm here in a heartbeat. I mean, he would turn around and say, when did you guys pay me to start helping somebody else? He'd probably quit on the team. 
Oh, heartbeat. Honestly, in a that's heartbeat. true. He probably would. That that, that does sound like Baker. In a heartbeat. Would, would walk off in a second. That's not how you want leading your team either. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. never going to win a Super Bowl with a guy like that. You need somebody that's always going to be do what's best for the team, and he's more out for himself, as you can see yeah. from his – I know you got to make your money, but he's in every single commercial break of every yeah. single thing I watch. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Get your bag. But at the same time, he's got – he's back to the point where he's got more commercials than – Touchdowns. Six, yes. Yeah. In a game. Exactly. Last year was the one year I'm like, okay, he's doing better than the amount of commercials he has. And then this year, mm-hmm. it's kind of balanced itself out. And he's seems like he's got a great backstory coming up, undrafted, transferred out, went somewhere, won the Heisman. Like, awesome story. But is it it's, – this is not a league about stories. You've got to perform. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. And the guys are have... as arrogant as he is. That's the that's the key right there, Brandon. Is the arrogance. I hate seeing him succeed when he's so <laughs> cocky, like what he did with KU and playing in the flag, and yeah. it makes other guys like I think it was one of the Bosa brothers did the same thing to him. It makes him want to mock you. Yeah, you don't want to be yeah. a mockery in this league. Exactly, threatening mm-hmm. a seventy-one-year-old coach that you're going to kick his ass. I mean, telling a guy that you're going to go and you know go back to Texas if you don't like you know whatever it is that you don't like. I mean, the things that you do and you say. You know, people don't forget, you know, they don't, they, they, you know, they just don't, they don't forget those type of things. And honestly, what you said, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, there were some Chiefs fans that brought up when Mahomes was on his little slump there, if you want to call it his slump, because um, it was a team slump. It wasn't just a Mahomes thing. Um, well, he was too busy in the offseason doing commercials. That had absolutely nothing to do with it. Mahomes, they don't realize that when Mahomes goes and does a commercial, a lot of times they come to him, first of all. And a lot of times if he goes to do those commercials, he's gone for a day or two. And he's still working. And he's yeah, still we'll working. We'll find him the state of the art facility, wherever he's at. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Get that is true. Grinding. Exactly. He's not gone for weeks at a time doing commercials. He's, he's gone for a day or two. And not only that, it was, an, those were ridiculous statements. There was no reason to say those things. Um, the man b- lives and breathes the game. Um, he practiced in the off season how to throw behind, you know, the behind the back pass and throw it accurately. He threw another left handed pass a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was effect. Think it was during the Raiders game. He threw a left handed pass. Yeah, it was. It was pretty awesome. It was pretty, pretty awesome. Pass. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, he does things that no one else can do. He's his vision is off the charts. His, his football IQ is off the charts. And, you know, I love the fact that Aaron Rodgers, the one thing that he said on the Pat McAfee show, um, because McAfee asked him, he said, you know, Mahomes really well and you guys are friends. And what do you think about the situation he's going through right now? And he said, absolutely nothing. He goes, I'm not worried about it in in the least. And McAfee said, really? He said he's playing, you know, he's throwing interceptions. He's, you know, he's throwing balls in the dirt. He's not looking like himself. He goes, Every great quarterback, whether it be Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, Brady, myself, if you want to call me great, it doesn't matter. You can go back years. We've all gone through some type of slump or some type of situation where we've had an issue like this, whether it be year one, year three, year 10. He said he is the last quarterback that I would ever have to worry about having an issue going forward. He will come out of this and he'll come out of it just fine. That I don't see too. Huh? With like Twitter with Mahomes, everybody's on social media, which makes it blow up. Back in like Peyton Manning's day, it wasn't as social media heavy, so you weren't getting all these fans just like, yes, bombarding them. It was like you'll see it on TV, but now with how it, everybody's tweeting, like when the players were tweeting at the fans and stuff, that wouldn't have happened. 10, 15 years ago. Not at all. There was none of that interaction. I think the social media aspect makes it worse because he'd just be having a slump, but the fans multiply it, blow it out of proportion, especially other teams' fans, and make it worse than it actually is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're right, Brandon, because and Caleb and I had talked about this back in the day when I would hang out with Derek and we would be, you know, wherever we'd be, you know, whether it be Derek or Tony or it didn't matter who it was, Neil Smith, we'd be at Dixon's Chili eating or at a restaurant or wherever it may have been. 
could have been a mall and they would see us and it'd be after a loss. They, nobody, nobody would ever walk up and say, you're trash. Nobody would walk up and say, you played like shit. They would say, Hey man, you'll get him next week. You know, and people that knew me that knew him, that knew that I knew him, that we were friends or that I was friends with the team, they would say to me, I ain't worried about that. They would never, tra- they never trashed our players. It's almost like this new breed of fans, if you will, that have decided that it's okay to call people names and continually br- just blast them for no reason. I mean, Tyron Matthew goes on social media and says, can't wait to get back to work. You're trash. That's the it's first the thing they say to too. I've looked through some of those. It's just feel bad for those athletes that yeah. Mahomes will tweet it and they call him my fraud. And, yeah. I mean, of mm-hmm. course he's not going to take joke. it personally, but that would get old every single time. It does get old, yeah. Memes of yourself, like on top of Tom Brady's shoulders as the kid. Yeah, like that, all that dumb crap. That would get old. Do. Yeah, it's good. They're people too, man. I mean, they're human beings that, you know, no matter what you want to think of them, just because they get, you know, and I've heard, well, they get paid and they're in the social media. They get paid a lot of money to get trashed. No, they don't. It doesn't matter how much money you make, whether you make 12 bucks an hour working at McDonald's or you make $100 million a year playing football. If I drove through the drive through every single day at McDonald's and you handed me my food and I said, you don't even know how to hand a bag right, you're trash. And I did that every single day. I'm sure that would get to you. It's no different than these guys. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It's going to get to you. It's just in a lot bigger frame and a lot bigger platform when you have hundreds of millions of people seeing this daily. And I don't blame Tyron Matthew for getting upset. I don't blame him for getting mad. You know, I mean, maybe his choice of wording may have been off that day, but at some point you're going to snap. And he's never been afraid to say things. He never has been. He's not filtered. He doesn't have a filter. I don't have a filter. That's the best part about him. That's the best part about him is he goes out there and you see the mic'd up versions where he's like, I'm so like against the Browns last year. That was my favorite. Yeah. Hey, I got by you. Yeah. He's in the backfield. I dropped him. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And then he goes back and says, yeah, they smashed, they smashed me to the ground, but I got him. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. That was great. Yeah. He said that dude kicked my ass, but I got him. (laughs) Yep. He's a different you know, player. He's he's a great guy. He's a really, he really, really great is. guy. I mean, and look what he just did today. I mean, you know, he handed out like what? I don't know, a thousand turkeys by himself today. I mean, it was just yeah, loading people's awesome. cars up. That. And you know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just fantastic for people to do. He doesn't have to do that. You yeah, know? he doesn't. There's a lot of Especially players that don't do from anything. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he comes yeah, in and he's, he made an immediate impact from day one. Yeah. Which is, I mean, he did. And I gotta say this before we get too far off and the show goes way longer than it normally does. Something was said by Clark Hunt that was a little upsetting to me. I don't know that it got very far, um, but he was asked about the Tyron Matthew contract extension. And he, he didn't really go too far into it at this point, but he said, well, at this, at this point, we've kind of put it on the back burner because we're waiting for basically what Caleb and I have talked about and what we already knew, that they were waiting for the CBA numbers to come out to see what they look like. But he had said with other distractions, which are distractions we talked about on the show, that they have kind of put that contract on the back burner for right now, which I really think that was a stupid thing to say. I'm sorry, but it really was. It wasn't the right thing to say on in a public forum. Um, I do know that that contract has been talked about and it's been, I know for a fact it has, and that has been um, something that they have decided on at one time. Then a couple of players got signed from other teams. Things changed a little bit. I know that they have no, absolutely no 
plans on letting him go. Um, 